Becoming a blockchain developer is one of the fastest ways to change your career and earn a six-figure salary. It's one of the highest paying fields in tech with an average salary well above $100,000 per year. But how do you actually pull this off? Well, in this video today, I'm going to talk about a step-by-step -step plan for earning six figures as a blockchain developer. I'm going to talk about all this as a blockchain developer myself who's done this and has helped lots of other people do the same. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about how to earn six figures as a blockchain developer step by step. A little bit about my background in case you're not familiar. You know, I'm a self-taught programmer. I didn't go to school for computer science. I didn't, you know, go to a coding boot camp. You know, I taught myself on my own. Now, I was already a developer before I got into blockchain, but when I started my coding journey, I was able to scale my income to six figures within 18 months of just learning to write my first lines of code. And I've helped lots of other people do the same thing. You can totally do this as a beginner. You can check out the video I did with Pavan. I helped him land his first blockchain developer job in Silicon Valley, making over $100,000 per year without any blockchain experience. And in this video, I'm gonna take all the knowledge that I've acquired from having done this myself and helping lots of other people do the exact same thing so that you can see how to do it step by step. And if I had known this stuff before I started this process, I honestly could have done it a lot faster. So let's get into it. Like I was saying before, you know, blockchain is one of the highest paying fields in tech with an average salary of about $150,000 per year. Now, of course, that's somebody with an experience, but whatever I'm evaluating opportunity, I want to know what the averages are and what the total upside is before I go down that track. And you can see on the upper end, you have lots of people making over $200,000 per year uh, with an opportunity like this. So sure, you may not start making six figures right at the gate, but how can you get there? And that's exactly what I want to talk about. Well, step one is you have to learn the skills, you know, period. If you don't know the right in-demand skills that the market is looking for, then nobody's going to pay you and you're not going to end up making six figures as a blockchain developer. So what are they? Well, the first number one skill that you have to understand is solidity. So what separates blockchain developers from other developers is the ability to actually write programs and put them on the blockchain. And the number one programming language for doing this is solidity so that you can write smart contracts for the Ethereum blockchain and other EVM compatible chains. Solidity has the largest uh, you know, language market share for any smart contract platform and therefore is the number one skill that you have to understand as a blockchain developer. Now, after that, you know, Solidity, unfortunately, is a little bit of a limited language. Only you think you can really do with it is write smart contracts. So if you want to do anything else like create a website, write scripts, deploy your smart contracts, write tests, create bots that interact with them, then you need a secondary programming language. And my number one recommendation for this is JavaScript. So JavaScript is the number one language for blockchain developers just behind Solidity. And so if you want to become a highly paid blockchain developer and scale your income to six figures, then you need to get good at JavaScript. And I'm super excited to announce that I'm launching the ultimate JavaScript training, the JavaScript Bootcamp on Thursday, February 15th. Inside, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know in order to become a JavaScript master so that you can, you know, expand your income possibilities as a blockchain developer. So trust me, you don't want to miss this. Hold your spot with the link down below. All right, so the next skill that you need inside your developer toolkit is having some type of framework for being able to create smart contracts. You need to know the Solidity programming language, but then you also need to be able to have a framework on your computer. So Hard Hat is a really good example of this. Uh, you're also going to need some blockchain-based libraries in JavaScript like Ethers.js, okay, so that you can talk to the blockchain because most applications won't talk to them out of the box. Most programming languages won't. Uh, then you also need some type of framework to create websites or front end. And my two big recommendations for this is React.js and also Next.js. And then finally, you need a way to run JavaScript on your computer outside your web browser, install packages, and that's exactly what Node.js is for. All right, so those are the basic skills that you need to know. Now let's talk about how to actually learn the skills, okay? So the best way to do this is what I call learning by doing. And I'm going to break this down into two different phases. Phase one is what I call guided development, okay? So this is basically where you want to learn, be learning the fundamentals of the programming language that I just talked about and, and by creating projects, okay? You can do like language tutorials where you see each part of the programming language, but eventually you want to be putting that together to where you're actually creating applications so that you can see how this stuff works in context. So if you want to get practice on how to do this, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can see a playlist there called Free Blockchain Development Courses. That's going to show you a bunch of different apps that you can create through this method. You can learn Solidity, you can learn JavaScript, 
um, you know, the basics through this type of process. And that's what I'm going to call guided development because you have a guide taking you over the shoulder and showing you everything step by step so that you learn through that process through like immersion, just like you learn a foreign language. But then once you finish that, you want to move on to the next phase, which is what I call unguided development. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to have the skills to become a six-figure developer, you have to solve problems uh, with code. You have to write code that actually does stuff without guidance, without the instructions. And that's where unguided development comes into play. So the easiest way to practice this is take something you've already created, like one of these tutorials that you might have done here, and then build a new feature on top of it. Basically make it do something that it doesn't already do, okay? Uh, you can start small. You could just change the background color just to get your feet wet. But then you ultimately want to add a new feature that it doesn't do. Now, the best step beyond that is to create a brand new project completely from scratch um, that you, you know, don't have the instructions for. Maybe you say, I want to create an NFT marketplace or an AI NFT mentor or something like that. Well, you want to write that code without referencing somebody else's implementation so that you're having to solve those problems step by step. And whenever you do this, you'll inevitably bump into walls, but that's how you push past them and you get on the same path of self-learning that every developer gets on, and that's how you learn the skills that are valuable in the workplace. Now, once you've gone through that process of unguided development, and you've actually created an app for yourself, now you've accomplished something that has two purposes. You have an app that you've created, and then you have a portfolio piece that you can show other people. So what you want to do is you want to take that portfolio piece and put it into a portfolio website, just like this, that basically markets you as a blockchain developer, shows off your project, lets people click through to the code so they can use it, okay? And then actually explains the code in some way. So what this is going to do is it's going to help you stand out from 99% of other people who are not going to do this, okay? They're just going to send out PDF resumes that are going to get lost in the employer's inbox. But if you do this, you're going to show that you're going the extra mile and it's going to sort of pre-screen you uh, before you actually get on the phone with somebody who might want to hire you. All right, so once you've got that part down, it's time to start looking for the job. Now, let's talk about the path to, you know, getting six figures as a blockchain developer, because that's the point of this whole video. So you have two options. Option number one is you could get a six figure job out the gate. So it is possible. It is harder. You know, I personally did this and we'll talk about what qualifies the value proposition for a six figure blockchain developer later. But I think for a majority of people, sort of the better option is to get your foot in the door somewhere and then increase your salary over time, whether that's through getting a raise at your current position or stair-stepping your way through, you know, changing jobs to getting that six-figure mark. So if you choose to take that route, there's, again, two different forks in the road. One is that you can get like an entry-level job as a blockchain developer, all right? And then you can work through that process. But the other way, and this is one that I really like, I've helped lots of other people do, um, is basically you can start out as a front-end developer and you can transition your way to other parts of the stack inside of blockchain. Or you can just stay a front-end developer because there's lots of good paying, you know, JavaScript front-end jobs inside the Web 3.0 space, okay? You know, becoming a JavaScript master gives you an additional entry point into the industry. And that's one of the reasons I've focused so much on JavaScript lately. And it's one of the biggest reasons that I'm launching this JavaScript bootcamp coming up on February 15th. So again, make sure you hold your spot down below because this could be your big ticket to landing your first Web 3.0 job. All right, so no matter which direction you choose, whether you go straight for the throat and become a six-figure developer, obviously you've got to get your skills up to that level. We're going to talk about what constitutes those skills here in a second. Or you decide to basically you know, go in a lower level and stair-step your way up to the next level. Y you have to understand at what point do you become a six-figure developer? What sets them apart from everybody else? Um, so that's what I'm gonna talk about now. All right, so what sets six-figure developers apart from other developers and how can you run this yourself through this test to see whether you have what it takes or not? So I would I would categorize a six-figure developer as a true problem solver, okay? So somebody says like, hey, I have this problem with my code. This person can actually break it down and articulate how to solve it and they'll solve this problem in their head before they start writing the code. A lot of developers are trying to solve the problem and write the code at the same time, but that's really the backwards approach. You need to know what the solution is before you really start typing out the code to fix it. Now, there's gonna be little smaller problems along the way, but you should have the high level overview before you start doing that. So another big you know, characteristic of a six-figure developer is that they can work independently, all right? So this is someone that doesn't have to be actively managed. They don't have to have someone sit down and pair program with them. Um, they're not just always asking how to do every single task that's handed them. They pretty much know what they're supposed to do. Someone can give them a task. They can go off on their own. They can complete it. Now, every developer runs into problems they ultimately can't solve, but you have to be a good problem solver and figure out what's the best you know, compromise here to get around that for the best case business decision. Um, and that leads me to the next point, which is 
Uh, a six-figure developer really doesn't say, I can't, all right? If somebody tells you, hey, I need this done, they're not really going to say, I can't do this. They're going to say, how can I figure out how to do this? That comes with being resourceful. And how do I learn what I need to know in order to achieve this outcome? Now, inevitably, like I said before, some problems are truly unsolvable. Uh, there's, sometimes there's no solution. There's only trade-offs and you have to find the best trade-off that you can get in order to make uh, whoever you're working for happy. But it's about being able to, to know that that's the case uh, and not just, you know, say my, my technical ability to the limiter here. It's about is the problem actually truly solvable and trying to find the best way forward and dialoguing with that so that you can actually drive decisions in the coding process. Now, some misconceptions I want to clear up. Uh, Google is okay for six-figure developers. Uh, I, I, most developers would absolutely just crumble if they didn't have internet access to look things up on Google, on chat overflow, now using chat GPT to help solve problems. So don't feel like uh, you're inferior if you're having to look things up all the time. Good, well-paid developers still do this, okay? They still reference past projects or other projects to see how they solve certain problems. They don't always type every single thing out from memory. That's still okay. And the other thing is they still talk to other developers to, you know, bounce ideas off or ask questions. Uh, sometimes it's really common for beginners to be too scared to ask questions because they make it thinks that it's going to make them look stupid. But really competent developers are really quick a lot of times to just throw the questions out there quickly because they know the faster they get answers to problems, the faster they can find solutions and move forward and provide value. That's what a six-figure developer does. That's what separates them off from other people is providing more value faster. And so if you're not quite at that level, how do you get there? Okay, because again, this whole video is supposed to be on a step-by-step -step process that you can follow becoming a six-figure blockchain developer. So the best way to acquire these types of attributes are workplace experience, okay? So basically, once you get into your technology and you solve problems over and over again, you start to see the same types of problems go up and you develop that problem-solving muscle, okay? Uh, being able to work independently comes to the same means, okay? And then basically saying, you know, not saying I can't, but how um, also comes to the same means. Basically, experience fixes almost all this stuff, assuming that you have the potential to do it. And if you're watching this video, you probably do. Um, now, if you are not learning these things through workplace experience, maybe you want to enter into the industry, um, you know, basically as a six-figure developer, then you have to acquire these things on your own. How do you do that? Well, you do it by building really complex projects on your own. Sort of like, how do you get a job with that experience? Well, you get that experience outside the workplace and you can develop all these characteristics um, by working on your own projects um, that are very sophisticated by running into walls and figuring out how to get past those walls using AI to help solve problems. You can talk to other developers in Discord groups uh, you can go to hackathons, you can do all that stuff to get this experience outside the workplace and ultimately, uh, you know, raise your value to that six figure mark. All right, so that's an overview of how you become a six figure blockchain developer step by step. We've talked about the skills you need to learn, how to learn them, how to implement this into a roadmap into actually landing that six figure salary. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, if you want to do this, you have to get good at JavaScript, okay? It's going to give you an additional entry point into the industry. It's the number one language for blockchain behind Solidity. And if you want to become a JavaScript master, then make sure you hold your spot for the JavaScript Bootcamp this Thursday, February 15th. And so I'm going to show you everything you need to know step by step. So trust me, you don't want to miss this. Hold your spot at the link down below. And whenever you're finished, make sure you smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.